So let's take a look at one other kind of impact besides the obvious ones. So the obvious ones before we're talking about, you know, increased temperature, that means ice melts, raising uh, the sea levels. That's kind of level five understanding. If you want to go a little bit deeper, let's start talking about what actually happens in the ocean. So we have an understanding already of what coral reefs are. We understand that global warming is caused by extra carbon dioxide that we put into the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels. So what can happen if this extra carbon dioxide that gets into the air actually ends up getting absorbed in the ocean? So that's what this little section is about really quick. So global warming also affects oceans. Here's what we know, and this is some of the stuff that you probably have understood before. If you take excess carbon dioxide and you dissolve it in water, it makes the water more acidic by up to 30%. It's called carbonic acid when the carbon dioxide dissociates and mixes with the h 2 with the water in there. So why is more acidic ocean not good for coral reefs? So it turns out that coral, so when you go and you look at all this beautiful stuff, some of it is living, others are like the coral, kind of the carbonate skeletons that are left over, but either way, uh, they were once alive. So corals need something called carbonate ions to actually build their skeletons. And it turns out the more carbon dioxide that's in the water, or the more acidic it is, because acid breaks down uh, limestone and carbonate skeletons, basically, the more CO2 you have in the water, the more this stuff starts to not be available. Okay, so when you have hydrogen carbonate as a source and then carbon dioxide messing with that kind of equilibrium, you end up reducing the amount of carbonate ions that are available. So the main thing you need to know is as CO2 goes up, carbonate ions go down, coral life goes down. I don't know if you can see that really cool red arrow right there. Organisms cannot make new calcium carbonate by themselves, so they have to get this from the surroundings and use it to build up their own skeletons. It's like saying, I can't grow my body by making my own protein. A lot of that protein I have to actually get from eating, so I eat meat, and vegetarian sources of meat if you're not a meat eater, and then I take those amino acids and I build them into protein so that I can, you know, produce the enzymes and the hormones and the muscle that I need to stay alive. So these coral organisms need to need the raw materials and the raw materials come from their surroundings. You put more carbon dioxide into the water in their surroundings and then they lose their source of yumminess and then they aren't able to make their actual skeletons so they don't live and then everybody lives unhappily ever after. And that is one thing that is threatening coral reefs. So next time you go I was going to say skinny dipping, not skinny dipping. Next time you go, what's that other thing called? Snorkeling or scuba diving. And you go and look at some of these beautiful coral environments. Think about that next time uh, before you, I don't know, light a fire. Here's a little bit of the extra detail. If you want to take a look at this box, we're pretty much referring to this area right here. If you understand this, that's, that'll be like a level six understanding. If you want to go all the way and you want to be able to potentially explain the actual kind of relationship between carbon dioxide, carbonic acid, and hydrogen carbon ions, just take a look at this little box. That's probably the shortest way to be able to write it. Carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid. I mentioned that previously. It dissociates and then turns into hydrogen ions and hydrogen carbonate ions. The hydrogen ions convert the needed carbonate ions by corals into hydrogen carbonate. So now you can see the relationship between this and why extra carbon dioxide in the ocean is not going to be very helpful. And to finally top this all off right here, we need to be able to evaluate claims against climate change. So the internet, not the most reliable place. There is good stuff, but there is bad stuff as well too. So you have to be able to filter it out, understand what is good science and what is not good science. Making uh, facetious claims based on simple um, evidence basically is something else that can cause some easy conclusions that are not actually scientific. So basically these claims against climate change need to be evaluated. Don't trust everything that you read. It should be based on reliable evidence. Many sources on the internet are not reliable as this guy is understanding or not understanding actually. Be able to filter out biased claims. So this is an extra step here you could 
link this to TOK, uh, you could talk about the psychological impacts of advertising and news and politics and how that kind of intertwines with our understanding of science and moving forward with science as well too. Good luck and don't be fooled.